Hi everybody, it's Pam with Silver and Sparkles, and I have another fun one-page wonder for us today. So we are going to make these two wonderful uh, large pockets um, out of one piece of 12 by 12 piece of paper. So let me first show you um, what, what they look like. You end up with two um, large pockets that you can, um, I guess you could use them standalone. My intention is to mount them in a journal. So I imagine I'm going to take mine and um, let me just pick a page and put this in a journal like this. And then I may leave the side or the top open for additional tuck spots, right? This one um, has a top load and they're very roomy. And then I made the little pocket on the front um, as a top load and a side load. Okay, so that was one way to mount the small pocket. Again, all out of one piece, not, not the decorations, but the actual pockets themselves are one piece of 12 by 12 paper. This one I did a little different. Again, it's roomy. It has the top load. I just put some writing paper in there. This one, again, I imagine I will mount on a page leave maybe the side open. And then this one has a pocket here, but I made it just a flip open. So again, I could have put another pocket here. I was imagining journaling on this space as well. Okay, so the smaller pockets that layer on top of the big pockets, you can mount several ways. So we'll, we'll see if we come up with any additional ways today when I show you what we're making um, or how we're making it. So you do need, um, one piece of 12 by 12 um, scrap of paper cardstock, okay? And the first thing you're gonna do is cut it in half. So then you end up with two pieces that are 12 inches by six inches. And then on that 12 inch side, cut off a three inch section and you're left with a three by six. And do the same thing on this side. So now you have four pieces of paper. Two are three by six, and two are six by nine. All right, we are gonna score these, and we'll, we'll do all of them just so you can really quick see it. So on this nine inch side, I want you to score at four and a quarter. And eight and a half. Now I mention this often. If you don't have a scoreboard, you can use a ruler as a straight edge and measure and score that way. So don't don't let not having a scoreboard slow you down. Okay, once you've scored at four and a quarter and eight and a half, turn your paper and score it at five and a half. All right. And then we're gonna do a little bit of cold cutting and folding. Okay, so same thing. We're, we're just doing it twice. Four and a quarter on the nine inch side. Eight and a half. Turn, score at five and a half. And there you go. Now on these small pieces that are three by six, on that six inch side, score at five and a half. And that's it. So six inch side, score at five and a half. And that's all of our scoring. Now these we are gonna set aside for a couple of minutes and we're gonna work with this one. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and fold along these score lines and crease them down. And just so that I can show you a little bit easier of where I'm going to be cutting this, I'm gonna ink along my, um, along my score lines just so that you can see it and it'll make hopefully be a little bit easier for you. here. All right. Now we are going to cut out this section right here. 
leave the section that has um, the corner, you know, that this edge is folded, this edge is not folded. So we're gonna cut this out. And the way I do that is I cut, like there's my score line. I cut just to the right of that so I get that folded paper bulk out of there. And then when I turn it this way, I'm gonna cut just to the left of it. So I've hopefully cut out, I don't know if you can see that, but, but the part that's been creased. Now I do like to miter my corners. So we're just gonna do an edge, a rectangle, and then an edge here, okay? So just cut those off. Again, you're getting rid of some bulk. And then when you fold it in half and fold these up, you have a nice roomy, roomy pocket. And you may have to just kind of use your bone folder or your finger, depending on how thick your paper is. Now I'm going to do a notch at the top and you can use, um, you know, you can use a circle punch and do a notch. I decided just to be different this time. I'm using my whale, whoa, sorry about that y'all. My whale punch and what this did was it just gave it a little bit of a different little notch because I came down far enough. On these I didn't and you'll see that one is just nice and round. So I don't know, I was just feeling different. If you want to, goodness gracious, I'm just knocking everything around today. If you want to, you can mark the center so that you know, you, you know, or you can eyeball it. I usually just eyeball it, but there's my center point. And I'm gonna come down, and like I said, I'm gonna use this, um, whale punch and I'm coming um you'll see once I punch it right to where it leaves that kind of that cute little I don't know straight edge in the in the round so it's like a little notch okay just something different but it will work just as well with a circle punch and in fact we'll do this one um really quick I'll just show you in case y'all are confused I haven't um I haven't trimmed this one yet, but we can go ahead and cut our notch. You can just use your circle punch. Either way, see the difference? They're both wonderful. Okay, I'm gonna set one this one aside that I haven't finished um, mitering the edges and trimming it off because um, we will probably, we'll see, we may make both of them, but we may just, um, we may just do one. I'm trying to not have my videos be so long that they're overwhelming. I think this would be a great mass make project because it does come together very quickly. And if you've got 12 by 12 pieces of paper that you wanna use up, this would be a great way to kind of build up your stash of large pockets for your journals. And as I'm heading into the holiday season, like this green one, I'm not going to decorate just yet, but I envision this turning into a Christmas pocket um, for the holidays, so that'll be really pretty. Okay, so then all you have to do is glue these flaps down, and that leaves you with a very roomy pocket inside. So I went ahead and just inked a little around the edges as I was talking and then just add glue to the flap. And I am using uh, my new favorite wet white glue, right? <laughs> um, the Line Co brand PVA glue. I buy it in the bigger bottles and put it in my little tiny ones. If you're interested in any of the supplies I use, um, I am an Amazon associate, but you can go to my little storefront and just get ideas. Um, I have everything listed for you there. Okay, so you could stop there and that's just a great pocket that you could add. But I liked adding the, um, the tiny pocket on front. So we had scored this at five and a half inches. So that just left us with that half an inch um, to, to have as a flap. 
And I could have scored it in the middle too, but I'm just, I figured we could just fold it in half up or fold it up to that score line, right? And now we have a pocket, um, depending on how we want to mount the pocket. So I am gonna just miter those edges again, or those, the edge is at the corner, I'm not sure. Okay, now for the one that I um, did the flip on, the flip on, <laughs> I, trying to remember how I did that, I did it like this so that you don't see the white. So fold your pocket and then fold your flap back and then this flap will glue down to the big pocket. Okay, and then we will glue this edge and this edge to make it a top load pocket. And again, I did a thumb notch on it. So that's one option. And then the option here was I just glued the pocket together, left it open at the top, and then I glued on three sides so it's a side load. And I like both of these. I think this one I want to make it that with the, the side load. So let me go ahead and glue my pocket together. That means I'm gonna glue the bottom. There's not, I didn't, I don't have enough paper to have a flap for the bottom. But just glue the bottom together and then glue the flap over. I am going to add a little notch here. I'm just eyeballing the center. And this one I didn't go all the way down, so it's just a curve, but it is the same size um, curve, which I like. All right. And then because of these stripes, I like that. I've got the vertical stripes, and then the stripes are now going horizontal, and I think that looks really cute on there. And then all we have to do is I'm going to hold it on the side I want to leave open, and I'm going to glue the three other sides go around go around my little notch and then I'm just centering it pretty well hopefully <laughs> if not the, depending on how you decorate it you can kind of uh, make co cover up if there are some mistakes so now I've got this side load pocket I've got a top load and a top load and when I put it on the page it might be fun to leave this side open Put it on a, the journals open this way. Let me show you. The journals open like this, mount it on the, le the left hand side, and leave this one open. And I've got a little one, a little one, all kinds. Okay, that makes me happy. Now it's just to decorate, fill it with things. Again, I like the idea of doing these as a mass make and then having them on hand when you're um, needing to. Um, have pockets and things for your journals. Now on this one, again, we're cutting out, I don't have this one inked, but we're just cutting out this one section. And again, I cut out the bulk of where I scored. And we miter the corners. Tiny triangle pieces everywhere. Make sure everything lines up nicely, and it does. So now we have another one. I'm gonna really quick ink it because I definitely am gonna use these for a Christmas journal. Um, it's hard to believe that we're at the end of July and I'm already talking about my fall and Christmas crafts, but. You know, it's never too early to get started. And I need to have quite a bit of inventory for my shop. I'm hoping to do a few, if I can get myself organized, craft fairs. And of course, I like to sell in my Etsy shop too, so I have a lot to do. <laughs> now, I showed you the two options like, um, like we had on my, um, the ones that I did as a, to show you as the demonstration. <sighs> my brain. My brain is going faster than my mouth. Um, but I thought we would come up maybe with another idea. And what I was thinking 
this one, is, for some reason, this one's a little off, so I'm just going to trim it. I probably didn't lay it on my paper trimmer smoothly. I was thinking it might be fun to have a flip down. I'm just trying to think of what this would look like and how it would work. Um, or it could be a flip up. You know, that would be cute. We do a flip up. Which do I like better, the flip up? I think I want to do the flip down. I'm gonna stay with my original pot. Now doing the flip down, all of my lines are vertical. I don't get that nice contrast of the horizontal lines, but I'm okay with that. All right, now because I'm folding it back and this paper is not double-sided, I'm gonna really ink up just so at least instead of seeing bright white, we see brown. I think that'll be more aesthetically pleasing to me. And it just is taking quite a bit of ink, let's see. And that's just how I end up with ink all over my fingers. Okay, so if I do it like this, it'll be a flip down and we'll make it a side load. Um, let's make it load to the left, why not? Why not? a little notch and I think this is going to be cute oops I think I, I, I stuck it on the wrong side oh wait no I didn't that's how I wanted to do it oh goodness I guess it could have worked either way huh yeah so it doesn't really matter. You can figure out which way you want to do it. Now, because of these lines and the pattern of this paper, I am going to be pretty careful in how I glue it down because I do want them to line up. So I just glued this side and, and this side. No, I glued this side and this side. <laughs> All right, now you add glue to the white portion down and I'm just gonna line up I'm hoping I'm somewhat centered I am and I'm getting these lined up pretty well I think all right I don't know if you can even see that on the um, camera this is bothering me just a touch so what I might do when I'm ready to decorate this is do a really like a piece of book page is thin enough um it's thin enough paper i'll just go ahead and do it that if i make this look like an accent you know like i'm just decorating it'll fold it'll work right into that crease and cover up that white part of the cardstock that I tried to ink into brown. So let me just ink this a little bit and show you guys what I'm talking about. And then when I finish decorating this pocket, I think it will look just fine. Work it right into there so it still folds down nicely and give that time now, it kind of draws attention to the fact that there is a hinge there, but that's okay with me. I'd rather have that than that. Now I have a big white spot, right? <laughs> Instead of the little teeny tiny skinny one, but I'm okay with it. By the time I decorate it up like I have these, it's going just to look wonderful. So that gives you um, three different ways you can mount the tiny pocket one piece of 12 by 12 paper and you are good to go um, with these. I hope you guys are still enjoying the one page wonder series. I know I am, they make me happy. Um, and I love showing you ones that, that are kind of my go-tos all the time. So please don't forget to leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up, <laughs> subscribe to my channel, all those great things. I appreciate you guys watching and until next time, have a great one.